Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome back for another card. Today's card is a pop-up, and I've had some people ask me about pop-ups recently. I haven't done one in a while. It's got a closure where you take a piece of linen thread and you wrap it around a heart that's on top of a brad, and then you just untwist it and open it up. And on the inside, I have two balloons that pop up, and uh, they're kind of, I guess, 3D is what you would say. Uh, there are two balloons that have been crisscrossed, and I'll show you how to make that. So you just wrap it back up, and that's what holds the card uh, together. All right, the supplies that I'm going to be using, uh, first is this Just Kidding set by Stampin' Up! It just came out. It's a new photopolymer. I love it. Celebration Time, just some balloon dies by Simon Says Stamp. I've got some Landscape Trio. They're just border dies by Mama Elephant, and this hand-drawn hearts background by Simon Says Stamp. The first thing I'm going to do is stamp my girl at the bottom of this piece of Nina Solar White cardstock with some Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And I think this uh, piece is about two inches wide and four and a quarter inches high. And I'm going to be coloring her with Copics. Um, I'm going to speed through a lot of these steps. This card has quite a few steps in it, uh, so I'm going to kind of whiz through uh, a few of them, especially where it's repetitive, like coloring. So uh, her dress, or I'm sorry, I guess her shirt, is RV13 and RV19. And I did color out of the lines, as usual. Um, and I'm going to be going back and uh, cleaning that up once I'm done with, the, uh, with all the coloring, because it's much easier to take your zero colorless blender and push the color back over the lines after it has dried. Um, okay, so for her hair, her hair was a little strange because um, it's got all these swirlies in it. So I just kind of did my best to fit these three colors in it and I worked around the swirlies. So I created shadows where there was a curve and that's sort of how I fit all these different colors in here. For the um, chair that she's sitting on, I used two colors that were pretty far apart, but I kind of liked the kind of neonish color of these two together. Um, so I, I just used the YG21, YG25, and I colored the left areas darker than the right areas because my light source is coming from the right. So I missed a couple of areas here in the back and I went back in and filled them in. For her mouth, I just have an RV00. And then the legs, just really quick, an E57 and then an E55 on the right-hand side. I also did her shoes, RV19, which is part of her sweater. And then for her pants, I'm using C4 and C1. And then I'm also going to do the shadow underneath the chair in C4 and C1. So first I do the C4, then I blend it out with the C1. All right, now I'm going to fix my mistakes. I just push the color back over the line with my colorless blender. All right, I'm going to mat this image onto some Melon Mambo Stampin' Up! cardstock. And now I'm going to take the pieces that I've cut for this card. I have four and a quarter by 11, which is a standard piece of cardstock. And I'm going to score it at two and three quarters and two and three quarters. This is Crumb Cake by Stampin' Up! And then I've cut two pieces of Nina at four and eight, four inches by eight inches. And I'm also scoring them at two and three quarters. And then I'll take my Mama Elephant Landscape Trio. I'm going to use this. It's supposed to be clouds, but I'm going to use it on the side here. It's got some really cool stitching on the inside. And on the part that was two and three quarter inches that I scored, I'm going to um, die cut those on the edges. Now I'm going to fold these all in and uh, make them crisp with my bone folder. And so my two edges come in on my uh, crumb cake. Now I'm going to take the largest balloon die in the set. I'm going to cut two balloons out of pumpkin pie and two balloons out of melon mambo. This is a My Favorite Things, oh, I'm sorry, no, Impression Obsession, sorry about that, um, striped stamp set. And I didn't want my stripes to be diagonal, I wanted them to be horizontal. Um, so what I did was I inked up my stamp and I just placed my balloons down. And you want to make sure that the lines are exactly the same on both balloons because you're going to be merging them together until you want it to be consistent. So I used my tweezers to pull them off the stamp and then I'm going to take some clear embossing powder and uh, put it on both of these balloons. I'm not going to set it yet because I'm going to do the orange ones first, the pumpkin pie. Again, making sure that the lines are the same on both of these balloons. I'll pick them up and sprinkle them with some clear embossing powder. And then I'll go ahead and heat set all of them at the same time. And then I'm going to repeat the same exact process uh, for the other side of the balloons. And it's much easier to line these up because you can see the front will line up with the back by just looking at it. So you can line up the stamps with the actual image that you've already stamped. And then I heat emboss those as well. 
All right, now it's time to crisscross these balloons. Now what you're going to do is uh, take a scissor and start at the bottom of one of the balloons and cut a slit up to the center. And then what you'll do is right next to it, I mean like maybe a fraction of a millimeter next to it, you're going to cut another slit up to that same point. And then you can take your scissors and cut across. That's where I'm pulling it up. And you can see how tiny that sliver is. So I'm going to start one of them at the bottom and then the other one I'm going to start at the top. So you could uh, cut your first slit a little off center, but it's such a tiny one that you can just kind of aim for the middle and everything's going to be fine, I think. So once I get this sliver cut, I'm going to merge them by sliding one into the other and see if they fit. And they don't, no big deal. I'm, I'm a little bit off, which means I didn't cut enough toward the center on one of them. So I'm going to pull them apart and I'll just grab one of them and I will um, just cut a little bit further in so that I'm closer to the center on both sides and then uh, take it out of the center and now I'm a little further down so I'm put them back in and see if it fits and it works. So you can see how important it is to line up if you're doing those uh, horizontal stripes. So now you can see how it'll fold once the card closes. It'll easily fold uh, flat together. So I'm going to do the same exact process on these Melon Mambo uh, balloons. And now I'm going to take some linen thread, which are going to be my balloon strings, and I'm going to take the one that I have not cut at the bottom. So one is cut at the bottom, and one's cut at the top. So the one that's cut at the top, I'm going to put some two-way glue pen, and you need to use a pen that's not tacky after it dries, which is why I use this. And now I'm going to put my uh, linen thread on there and hold it for a second. And this two-way glue pen is really good about sticking. Um, you don't want anything that's going to be tacky because it'll interfere with the opening and closing of the card. All right, now I've got this uh, birthday balloon set by Stam Simon Says Stamp. And I'm going to take both of the balloons and I'm stamping off first. So here's Melon Mambo ink. I stamp off and then I'll stamp once or twice again on my paper. So this is pumpkin pie. So I'm going to stamp off, then I'll stamp once and then stamp twice because you get kind of a faded balloon on that third image that you're stamping. So I'm just going to keep going here until I am happy and filled all the top area. And I wanted to get kind of a half a balloon over there, so I just masked down the right side with a uh, post-it. I stamped off twice and then I stamped one more balloon. Now I've got my Misty that I'm going to be using sideways again, and I'll line up my sentiment. Um, now what I don't realize at this point is that I'm actually using this sentiment that's supposed to go on the outside of the card. Um, so I realize this later, so I'm just sort of everything's hunky-dory stamping everything right now because I'm not even paying attention. But um, I'll figure that out later. <laughs> Alright, so I've got another piece that just says happy birthday and I'm going to stamp that in there. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do is draw the balloon strings. And I took a crumb cake marker by Stampin' Up and I hand drew all these strings, just kind of wiggling my line as I go down and varying the lengths and I made them shorter at the top so that they wouldn't kind of cross the sentiment and then a longer on the sides. And then I went back in and added a little string where the knot is on the balloon, on each of these balloons. Now it's time to create the pop-up. So I'm going to fold it and I'm going to mark these pencil marks on the outside, on the back of the cardstock. So I'm going to measure a half inch down and I'll mark it then another half inch, then another half inch. So I've got a half inch, a one inch, and a one and a half inch mark. And then I will take uh, on that first half inch mark, I'm gonna measure seven eighths of an inch to the left and make a mark. And then on the next one inch mark, I'm gonna mark seven eighths of an inch to the left. Now your measurements will be different depending on what object you're gonna be popping up, but these are the measurements that work for the balloon that I die cut. I'm going to take my scissor, and I, t I like using a large scissor for this because you have a pretty thick cardstock that you're cutting through two layers of. And you're going to cut from the crease to um, the pencil marks that were 7 eighths of an inch out. And you'll fold it just a little bit, and then unfold it. Then you'll open your card, you'll push the piece that you cut toward the inside, and then fold it together and squeeze it with your fingers to kind of crease the paper so that it easily opens. And that's your pop-up. So I'm going to do the same measurements on the other side, fold it just a little bit, unfold it, open the card, and then push that piece out so that it comes into the center. And that's what the balloon is going to be propped up on. So you can see how these pieces are going to fit together. 
Now there is, I need to cut a hole because one of the pieces is going to overlap the other one. So I'm just going to cut just a little bit larger than a half inch hole because that's how wide my pop-up is. And then instead of seven eighths of an inch, I'm going to come out one inch. And I'm just going to cut that piece out with a scissor. And it's going to be behind the balloon so you won't even notice. And you can see how these are going to open up. Now I'm going to work on the front. I have my hand-drawn background by Simon Says Stamp. And uh, you, I, I like to put my cardstock on top of the stamp when it's a big stamp like this. Now you can even use a bone folder to make sure you're getting really good coverage. And because my cardstock is folded, I wanted to make sure I really got good pressure. Now I'm going to sprinkle this with some clear embossing. I love the clear embossing look on this crumb cake cardstock. It's really pretty and subtle. It's not distracting at all. And then I'll heat that to set it. You'll be, able to, you'll be able to see as you close it that the hearts fit together. All right, I've got this, uh, hol it's called Holiday Shapes, just hearts and stars. And I'm gonna be using the largest heart from this set. And I've got a brad, it's kind of blurry here, but it's kind of a button looking brad, so it's flat on the top. And what I'm gonna do is press my brad to a glue dot. The glue dot sticks to my brad. And then I'm just gonna put the brad on the heart that I just cut, this is Melon Mambo cardstock. Now this is paper smooches, he said, she said, and I'm stamping it with some VersaFine black onyx ink. And this is the moment when I went to go grab the sentiment that I realized that, oh my gosh, I did the wrong thing. <laughs> so I'm off camera sort of figuring out what I'm gonna do about this and decided that I was just gonna keep on moving forward and fix it in a little bit. So uh, I got, went ahead and stamped the outside sentiment and uh, cut that out. So I'm going to be popping that up on the front. And then I ended up re-stamping the inside, what should have been the inside sentiment. And I uh, punched it with this decorative label punch. I guess this is the standard way to deal with mistakes on the inside and just covered over my mistake. It just wasn't worth redoing that inside panel. All right, I'm taking my, uh, my outside panel, I'm adhering it to my crumb cake, and I'm overlapping it just a bit so you can see it covers the right side just a little bit. And I'm going to pop up my sentiment now. I've got some linen thread that I'm going to cut to be my kind of latch for this card. And you see how it's bent. It does that a lot. But all you have to do is kind of take your fingernail and um, squeeze it against your other finger and it'll straighten out uh, that kink really easily. So I've got two dimensionals I'm going to put on here. Release, uh, Take the release tape off and then put the linen thread on top of it and that'll secure it. Now I'll make a mark where I want my brad to be that it's going to wrap around. And I've got my uh, paper piercer and a piercing mat. I'm going to make a hole first and then I'll put my brad in there. Now I flattened it out on the other side but then decided I wanted it to be raised up from the paper a little bit to leave room for my string that's going to be wrapping around. So I took two pieces of thick cardstock and I put them between the brad and the paper. And that kind of lifted it up a little bit and then I tightened my brad and then I removed the pieces of paper. And that way there was a tiny little gap between uh, the brad and the paper and it was enough room just checking here to make sure that my linen thread will wrap around. Okay, now I'm going to take my inside panels and put some ATG tape all around them. Be sure not to tape the part that's popping up. And the best thing to do is to line up the score marks and just lay down the inside piece and then fold down the outside piece to meet the inside piece. So again, we're just gonna put down the inside and then fold down the outside so that you don't have any issues with um, gaps in the back. And this is how it opens. And now finally, we're gonna add the balloons, some Tombow Multi-Adhesive. Uh, and just a little dot will do and you'll take uh, the part of the balloon that has a string, you don't want that to show and you're gonna place it right there on the pop-out piece and squeeze it. I squeezed it a number of times with my fingers just to make sure that it was secured um, and uh, it should fit perfectly because we had all the measurements and then do the same exact thing with the Melon Mambo balloon, just a little dot. Now you don't want, you wanna be careful not to get any of that glue showing on the back of the balloon by moving it around too much because then it'll stick because it's very tacky after it dries even. So I'm going to keep squeezing this, make sure it's all in place, and then I'll let it dry. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cut my linen thread at the bottom there. I thought about um, adhering it to the card base because that might be cool, but then I decided to just let it hang. 
Anyway, so that is the card. Um, it's got a lot of steps, but it really wasn't too hard, and um, I hope you enjoyed it, and you'll try it for yourself. So um, I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.